Hello, my name is Kelly Sullivan, and I will be giving a brief discussion um, on the informal reading inventory, otherwise known as the IRI. For this presentation, I've decided to break the IRI process down into three separate categories. Um, I've chosen to talk about things to do prior to administering the IRI, um, the actual IRI process itself, and then things to do once you've completed giving the IRI to um, the student. So prior to administering the IRI, I would suggest that you um, get to know a little bit about the student you'll be giving the test to, um, perhaps some of their background information, some family information, um, areas that they're struggling with, as well as areas that they are succeeding with in school at the current time. Um, the next step would be sort of to create an environment to administer the IRI that is appropriate for that particular student. Um, if it's a student who is easily distractible, you're going to want to create an environment that is free of as many distractions as possible, whether those distractions are um, visual distractions or noise distractions. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have the right environment for that child to take the test in. Um, Obviously, um, one of the most important things you can do prior to administering the IRI is familiarizing yourself with the actual test. This is important because you don't want to have to be fumbling with paperwork or reading directions while you're trying to give a test to a student who's sitting there waiting for you. Um, so definitely familiarize yourself with the IRI prior to giving it. And now that means um, familiarizing yourself with the components of the IRI as well as how to grade the child's responses. Um, what levels to begin at, what levels to stop at. Um, these are all very important things that you're going to want to know prior to giving the IRI. So once you've prepared yourself to give the IRI, um, it's now time to actually give the test. And so you have your student with you and the first um, part of the test is the Word Recognition Inventory or the WRI. Um, for this test, you actually start two levels below the child's current grade level. So, for example, if he was starting third grade, um, you would then start at 2-1, which is um, the beginning of second grade. It's two levels below 3-1. Um, at this point, you continue to give the WRI, and the highest level that the child completes without any errors is the level that you will then begin the oral reading passages with. And so again, you're looking for the last row of words completed without any errors. And then that's where you'll start the oral reading passage. So from there, you're going to start the reading passages. And the first, as I said, is the oral reading passage. Now the goal here is to identify um, instructional level. And then next, you don't stop when you reach the instructional level. You actually keep going until you find the child's frustration level. Um, after you reach the child's frustration level, you begin the silent reading passages. And you begin these at the same level that you completed the oral reading passages at. And you again, you complete the silent reading passages until you reach the child's frustration level. Now, along with the reading passages, they're also accompanied by a set of questions. Now these questions um, obviously pertain to what was read, and this is how the, um, the test giver also decides where the child's instructional level is, frustration level is, by the child answering the correlating questions to the reading passages. From there, um, the next step is to find the child's listening capacity level. And um, to do this, the person who's administering the test would then read the next unfamiliar passage to the child and have them answer the correlating questions. And you would keep doing this until you find their listening capacity level. Um, now, obviously, the reason for doing this is because some students will have an easier time um, comprehending reading when they're reading to themselves or when they're reading out loud or when they're reading silently and some will um, have an easier time doing this type of task when um, a passage is actually read to them and so the process of doing these three separate passages is for you to be able to um, 
see which areas the child has strengths and weaknesses in. Now throughout the test, um, it is kind of a lengthy test for some, um, especially those who have attention difficulties, and so you may find that it may be necessary to take some breaks. I know that the child that I administered the IRI on um, did have some attention difficulties and it was necessary for us to take breaks along the way, um, you know, little stretch breaks to just release some energy. Um, additionally, I found that it was actually um, impossible to have anything on the table within reach of the child because he would immediately reach for it, want to play with it, be distracted by it. And so um, from personal experience now, I know that the table should even be cleared. You know, only the materials that I'm using should be on the table. That way um, materials don't become distractions for the child. Um, these are just considerations that you should also take while giving the test. Um, finally, after giving the test, it's time to analyze your results. Now you should have been recording all along, but it, after administering the test, once the child has you know, left the room, this is time to analyze your results and see how the child actually um, performed. Um, you should be filling out your summary sheet and just taking an overall look at how the child performed on the different um, tasks of the IRI. Um, afterwards, it's also really important not to forget to fill out the special notes and comments section. Now this is where you might add um, the information about the child being distracted or um, the child being frustrated or certain emotions that the child displayed while giving the IRI or um, certain comments they made. This is also where you would start to think about possible recommendations for the child. Um, in your opinion, and judging by what the IRI has told you, um, what would be some appropriate reading recommendations for this child? Um, my particular student um, doesn't show an interest in reading, but shows strong interest in other activity areas. And so a recommendation of mine would be to provide him with reading material pertaining to his interests. Um, you know, this is when you would really get your brain thinking in terms of um, IRI results, the student that you're dealing with, and what you think the most appropriate recommendations would be. Um, I think that concludes my um, IRI informational session and the things that I have learned while um, administering my IRI for the first time. Um, I hope that you find it um, beneficial and that you um, take some time to explore the IRI yourself because it seems like a very helpful um, way to help assess and diagnose a child's reading difficulties. Thank you.